this up and we are live. How's it going tonight, Sarah? Thanks for being here. Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I guess where we should start at, you know, you, you recently wrote a book called Stone Cold, correct? Yep. It came out earlier this year. Okay. So what was the motivation behind that? And I guess, well, let's do this. Let's uh, get the motivation behind that. Maybe give us brief background about yourself so the listeners know who we're talking to here. How about that? Okay. Well, I'm 18 and I'm in college right now. That's exciting. Nice. And basically, I'm just a really, really big fantasy nerd that somehow was able to turn that obsession into money and being an author and writing books. And that's been a part of my life for a very long time. I love writing. I love creating stories. And I was able to get published. Nice. So from at a young age, you knew you liked fantasy and writing? Oh, yes. It was it was an obsession. I, I Many days, my librarians were like, oh, there she is again. Time to return the book that she checked out yesterday. And now she's going to go home and read another one. <laughs> Are you a pretty quick reader? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, that like that's your thing. Like, just I mean, I usually try to get through a one book a month, and it's pretty tough for me, just because I've just never been a big reader my whole life, and I've been trying to make myself read, and I'm getting better at it, but I cannot like crush a book that fast like you just said you were. Well, if I if I if I don't do homework, <laughs> I, can, I can read a book in a day. Yeah. <laughs> nice, and, and and like, still remember everything that went on to the whole story like you just got it nailed down if you read that fast yeah uh i i actually have a lot of trouble re I, I read a textbook and i don't remember anything nothing but if i read a book and if i get like invested in the characters and the magic system and the story then i can remember that a lot better because it it's humans and human emotions so. yeah so it's just something basically something you really enjoy compared to reading a textbook which you have no desire to do whatsoever no <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> how that goes. yeah i know how that goes just because there were certain books i read you know even in college that i really liked but then other books i was just or not even or just textbooks i would just force myself to read and halfway through i would just quit i was like i can't do this it's like it was like suffering for me for whatever reason but have you ever read a book and just stopped halfway through. I know you said you get invested in the characters, but you ever just stopped like a quarter way or halfway through and just said, nah, this book's trash. I ain't doing it. Yeah. That. Yeah, I have. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you, the books has got to suck you in. Like I know people who once they start like a book or a series on Netflix or something like that, they have to finish it just because they started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm well, I am picky about what I read. I have a really niche genre. Um, but I'm I'm perfectly fine reading anything as long as, you know, the characters get me invested and I and I don't <laughs> and I can't predict the plot. But you know, when it's a zombie novel and I know that beyond the fence they're gonna find the world and <laughs> I hear the plot twist is coming and <laughs> and a person gets bit in the group and they don't kill the person because drama uh, that yeah. that's when i stopped reading the book <laughs> this kind of sounds like you're talking about walking dead <laughs> uh, well i didn't watch uh, walking dead but i i did read a zombie book that was a lot like it and i just couldn't i couldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i did got it i was saying let me how do i want to say this yeah so i got into walking dead really really early and stayed with it you know, through, I don't know how many seasons are even out now, but just, I was like one of those people that it got so much, like kind of what you were saying that I kind of started predicting stuff and there was always just too many issues going on and I couldn't get involved with the characters. And that was one series I actually stopped and never went back to, which, you know, oh, well, I don't know where I was going with that point, but I was just <laughs> wanted to say that because I mean, it was a good show in the beginning. And then I never read the comics or any else. So I don't know if they're actually closely related or not, but it just got to where I couldn't handle it anymore. So but anyway, but what, what what was the process like of you writing your book? I mean, like, you know, start take us like from the, you just got an idea in your head and you're just like, oh, I'm going to start putting putting it on paper. OK, well, this this specific book was really special because I've, I've been writing for a long time and things have gotten progressively longer and progressively more complicated. But when I was about 15, I had this really awesome opportunity to go into this writing program that was that was led by a new times bestselling author and she basically took in everyone who was interested in writing and wanted to learn how to write and possibly get published and with for six months we wrote our own books and she yeah. taught us how to do stuff and 
Yeah, that was a little bit nerve wracking uh, because it was my first year of high school and I had to write a novel and I was learning at the same time and everyone else was decades older than I was because who am I, a 15 year old who wants to get published? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I was able to learn a lot and I was able to meet a lot of new and interesting people and I got to learn how to get published and that was eventually how I did it. Mm. So, so talking about publishing, and I don't know anything about the process of writing a book and how it goes, but I know a lot of people that I've talked to on here self-publish their stuff rather than, you know, send it to a publisher, I guess. And I don't, I think, I guess because it's easier just to self-publish than have somebody publish. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And you just well, got to There are pros and cons for each. So. What, what, are, what are they? I mean, so I mean, like I, like, I just don't know anything about it whatsoever and how this process is involved. Okay, well, with self-publishing, um, you have a lot more freedom. You can design the cover and, you know, your book is going to get out there and reach people. But at the same yeah. time, it's like very expensive. You have to do all the marketing yourself. And sometimes it's kind of daunting because you don't exactly know where to start. Mm. And luckily for me, um, the the best-selling author, Angie Fedemore, who led the program, she had personal contacts with agents that she knew from publishing companies. So we were able to have that credibility through going going through the program, and I was able to pitch to them. So it's traditionally published. And traditionally published is really nice because you have a platform to stand on. You have people who will market your book like alongside you, and that's nice, and you have a really good cover. But you know, it's it's kind of hard to get it to get the attention of publishers, so that's why that can seem so daunting. Yeah, that makes sense. And just obviously, every publisher is not going to publish everything that's sent to them. It's got to be something they will think they can really sell and put out there and market, like you mm -hmm. just said. Yeah, yeah, it's one of these things that you know that I don't know because like. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this thought that I have in my head right here because so many people want to write something, but I don't know. I wonder if they get nervous about trying to pitch it to an actual publishing company like you did, rather than just say, "Oh, I'll just spend all the money myself and just make sure it gets published." You know, I mean, it's just like they're not willing to take the chance on trying to send it out there because it, it means it's a grueling industry. Just, just yeah. an industry to break. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm sure there's tons of rejections that people were just sending every day and just it's kind of you know i mean if i got rejected i'd probably like well i tried and then but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but i mean i think at the end of the day if you really really want to do something though you're going to have to it's like everything else in life you know you you get what you put out of it right so you keep writing you keep grinding it out and eventually hopefully somebody will pick up one of your books but i don't know but it seems like you did pretty well right off the gate <laughs> Yeah, I, I I was lucky, um, but a, a lot of a lot of authors that that are famous right now wrote a whole lot of books and then managed to get one published, and then they were able to springboard off of that. So it's it, it's very common for just you know failing a few times, and then trying mm -hmm. more, and then trying more. And, is it is it pretty yeah. easy? Like after you probably get one published, then you can just kind of keep going. Like you said, you can springboard off that, right? Is it kind of easier just because now the kind of market recognizes you you got some uh yeah some uh, what's the word am i looking for you got some uh prestige behind you i guess and they know that you're just not somebody out there just writing random stuff and you're actually putting all the effort into what you're doing so, yeah definitely yeah so your genres your genre is fantasy right is that yeah. what you're why why fantasy young adult fantasy oh so okay. many sub genres in fantasy <laughs> okay so and like that's just your thing right that's just, you don't want to like i don't know that's just your thing that's what you like you love to write about yep i i love fantasy and sometimes like dystopian and sci-fi i wander occasionally mm -hmm. into that realm although most of my dystopian sci-fi books aren't really dystopian they're more like like aliens came down so it's still that element of fantasy <laughs> nice. for me reading my sci-fi novels <laughs> nice so uh, you said it you took you six months to write the book is that what you said mm -hmm. yeah so was it just kind of writing a little bit here and there and then just kind of put it in and you know together along the whole six months process like you'd write a chapter a night or something is that what you thought or is like yeah, a, write yeah. a thousand of words or something like that mm-hmm it was like it, it was like a deadline like uh we would have meetings and then and then uh the author would, would come on and be like okay guys you have to you have to get done with the quarter of your book 
now half of your book. And, and so she basically split it up into sections. And six months is a very, very short amount of time to write sure. a book because the publishing industry is, is as slow as tar. Like, <laughs> no one, like, like uh, Angie, um, the author, I actually said, you can pitch to an agent with just an idea. You don't even have to have the novel written yet. Really? That's how slow it is. <laughs> Really? So you just say your idea if you want to do another zombie apocalypse book, but you're but your way where you can't really guess the outcomes. You could just say that mm-hmm. to a publisher and then like they're like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Right. Yeah, and they're like, give it to us in about a year. You know, we'll wait. <laughs> hmm. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, so you got the one book under your belt. Are you going to try to springboard like you just said and start writing another one or what's the deal? Yeah, that would that would be really nice. I actually have the sequel to the one that I just published, and it's almost done. I've been saying that for so long. That's what <laughs> authors do. They just get distracted and they and they never finish anything. But but I'm almost 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 done with it. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to to send that out to people, get feedback, start the editing process, and eventually uh-huh. finally just submit it. <laughs> So, so how tough? I know you just said you you have classes and you just started in college. So, I mean, how tough is that? You know, writing a book and or even a sequel to your book and taking classes at the same time. Uh, well, difficult for me because I'm really bad at time management. Okay. <laughs> so, so I can so I can do the so I can do the classes and then do all my homework and then I'm I'm thinking to myself, hey, it's the evening, nothing's happening. Do a free time. How about you write your book? And then I'm thinking. <laughs> No, I want to go on YouTube and see what my new animator show is doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many distractions out there just because, yeah, it's just like, you know, when I get on or I'm at work or I'm everywhere, I mean, there's so many distractions as far as your phone, laptops, tablets or whatever. I get, you know, I start a little project of my own, whether it's just something for work or something like even editing these podcast episodes. I'm like, oh, let me go see what's going on, on YouTube. Screw this. I'll do it later. <laughs> <laughs> but, yep. but I mean, it's a lot of self-discipline, don't you think that? I mean, you know, you said you're bad at time management, but, you know, you're I don't think that's entirely true because you've obviously written the book and you've already written the sequel also almost. Right. Yeah. Well, so, I, I, I could be better at it. Could be better. I like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you talk about a lot about anxiety, too, uh, based on what a little bit about know about you. I mean, do you do you say you you're hot? You have a lot of anxiety with these books or just in general or what? Yeah, I, I do have a lot of anxiety, particularly social anxiety, because mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm a people pleaser. I, I so it's kind of hard for me to, like, open up and make friends because I'm constantly thinking about, you know, how do I present myself? How do I be myself? Like, like, how do I go about, like, even just simple conversations are, are kind of hard for me because uh, at the end of the conversation, I think, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Uh, and that's actually one of the reasons why me, uh, why, why I wrote this book in the first place was because the main character kind of deals with that problem as well. Like self-expression, trying to be yourself. And I kind of, <laughs> I kind of tried to, you know, put myself in her and kind of let her go through that character arc and and maybe I could have a lesser problem with it and kind of discover the answer to how you can be yourself like like together with the main character I like that Uh, have you always felt like you had social anxiety even yeah (laughs) it's just uh, I don't know if if, uh, how hard is it for normal people to talk to people (laughs) I wouldn't know (laughs) well I mean the reason because I don't want to say I have social anxiety, but I have the same thoughts as you, exactly what you just said. I mean, all through that I can remember, I guess mainly in high school is where I remember it the most is where I was always worried about conversations, what I was saying, you know, uh, you know, did that conversation go well or should have I spoke up? Why didn't I speak up? Why didn't I speak my mind? It was always stuff like that. And just that, oh, you know, like, oh, you're stupid. Why'd you say that? That was dumb. <laughs> and like now everyone's going to think you're an idiot. Yeah. So and I don't know, I, I don't want to say I got over it, but I remember even having it all through college. And I mean, even today, like, you know, sometimes I go home and I don't think it's as bad, but I'm like, yeah, that probably could have handled that situation better. Or even on the podcast, dude. I mean, you know, if I go back and while I'm editing and, and like hear something that I said or, you know, somebody calls me out on something, I'm like, damn. Oh, well, I mean, not every interaction is going to go 100% perfectly. I mean, I think it's just because we're human and just, and I, I guess I maybe I kind of learned to let go of it a little bit. I don't know. But is it something that you just try to work on little by little or you just kind of just deal with it? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to work on it, especially since I'm now in college and I have a whole mm. lot of new people and I'm around a lot of new people. So I'm just trying to constantly say to myself, like, okay, you said something stupid. Get over it. People probably won't remember it. Like, exactly. like and, and just try. <laughs> just get up and, and try and move on. And yes, I'm going to make mistakes, but there are plenty of people out here. And eventually I'll I'll like throw a whole lot of spaghetti to the wall and see which and see what sticks. See what works. <laughs> yeah. So I mean that's one of the things that I guess I kind of learned that you know, maybe it was in college that, you know, my so- circle of friends got smaller. And you know, as you kept getting older, they seemed to get to get smaller still. And that's kind of when the ones you know who you can trust, who you can't trust, and who really like you for who you are, rather than just for what you're wearing or what you're saying or how cool you are. Um, but I think that's just kind of what helped me. Is like at the end of the day, I was just like, all right, yeah, well, I got me. These guys like me for who I am. I don't have to be some one I'm not. I'm not, you know, because you just if you try to be someone fake, then you kind of forget who you really are, I think. And that then it's just like it leads to more problems down the road of you trying to be this person and impressing all your friends. And then you're going home at night or going to sleep. And you're like, why was that that way? Then this kind of makes it worse. It just kind of snowballs and just builds off the other. But I think it's just where I learned that it's just you just kind of I guess it's, it's easier said than done, of course. But just at the end of the day, just like, all right, well, you know, fuck it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm kind of a hypocrite with this, but uh-huh. people really shouldn't have to have to project a different version of themselves onto sure. people to to be liked. I mean, like if you do that to get friends, then it's not really like you're not going to get friends that that you like. Like the purpose of friendship is is someone that's you can be yourself with that you sure. can be happy with and and it's a mutual beneficial relationship and so if and if you're not acting like yourself then that's not really friendship i agree i agree 100 percent. yeah then if you're having to like things like you know i know you're into fantasy and all that what you just said but if you're into things like that well all right so if you're doing things that you're not into just because they're into it and you're just making you're not being yourself again you're just kind of just going with the flow of things and you're kind of wasting your time so to speak and you never get that time back that's one thing i've been learning lately that time is the most important thing in life and that how we spend it and how we use it is really important to me now like you know we only have a finite amount of time on this in this world if that's what you believe and that you know if you waste it doing stuff you don't want to do you know people pleasing which i i think i used to be a people pleaser too which i probably still am i don't know well, I kind of do know. I shouldn't have said that because I've learned. I think what helped me is I finally learned to say no. This is the first time I've had this conversation like this, so I'm thinking out loud too as I talk. But yeah, but it's. I think a lot of people, you know, are people pleasers, and I don't know if that's just you know. I think generally people want to be kind to each other, so they always say yes for the most part, right? And even if it kind of makes them at a disadvantage for themselves, that because they, I think generally people want to be kind to one another. Is that what you think or no? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This seems like that's you know what the world needs or needs or it has. Just because if, if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to drive cars on sixty miles an hour going down the interstate. We'd always be all over the place, you know. So you know, and even just walking through college and stuff that you know, I used to work in higher education. It just seemed like people used to not really care anymore about you know how you dressed, or maybe this is me this outside looking at how you dressed, what you're doing, you know, what music you're listening to. Just people are going, okay, cool. That's what you're into. Maybe that was my experience. Maybe that's just not everybody's experience, but it's what it seems like. But do you, do you think people or younger people, like you said, you're 18 kind of have more social anxiety compared to others or what, or older groups? Yeah, probably because, yeah. you know, when, I don't know. When when you're younger and when you're a teenager, I'm still a teenager. You you're just more insecure about yourself, mm-hmm. and it it feels like people my age are just still trying to determine who we are as a person. Sure. And so it, it's kind of hard to to like like well for me, I don't know for for anyone else, but for me, like it, it would be kind of hard to to make relationships because you don't exactly know what you want, and mm. you're just kind of just kind of figuring it out as you go does it is one is one thing you so for me trying to like i said you know i was kind of weird about having conversations and always worried about what i was saying and and 
you know, I didn't want to always say something stupid, but I wanted to learn. So that's one of the reasons why I started podcasting was to, you know, have these cool conversations about topics that I'm not very fluent in, I guess, if you will. And just that, you know, and express my thoughts on them and learn to talk or speak better with people and just, I don't know. It just felt like it was a, a, a really good pro for me. Is that kind of what you think though? I mean, look at you now doing, having a conversation with me. I mean, I would have, if you, if I would have never read that about you, I would have never thought she had social anxiety. I would have just thought that this is just, I don't really like to label people like that. Right. I just don't initially say, Oh, there's something weird or well, maybe they got anxiety. I would just thought, okay, cool. She's just a writer. She's just doing her thing. That's just Sarah. No big deal. Yeah. Well, it, it was, it was really bad. Like, uh, like a long a long while ago like I, I still struggle with it but that is again uh one one of the reasons why I am trying to do podcasts um like like just like you because I get mm. to meet people and I get to talk to people and learn how to talk to people and it's been really nice actually because I get to meet a lot of like-minded people and just practice you know being on your toes and answering questions and yeah. <laughs> I I, I kind of like it actually yeah, it's it's really cool. It's like the podcasting community is like, I think it's like the rising tides lift all boats. People want to generally, like I was saying, want to help each other. And, you know, if you have like your book, help promote it in any way possible and, and just do each, you know, do things like that for each other. And it's cool community. And there's other little communities out there like that, you know, is, that I read about. And, you know, when I listen to their podcasts that, you know, there's like their own tribe and their own niches that it's like, oh, cool. Like, hey, man, you know, we're all here to help each other. We're not here just to, you know, be people down or demean them in any way that because i mean for the most part this has been my again my experience maybe that's just me personally speaking again but um you know i've done over a, i don't know how many of these episodes now but generally they've all been pretty well in my opinion and it seems like we're all just in there trying to help each other out and it's a cool thing yeah. so i don't know but yeah but i agree that um you know i had another friend that i've been helping him start his uh podcast gaming channel whatever he's doing and that you know he, he was talking about just being in front of a camera and starting to speak and learning to do that compared to before when he thought it was super easy to do. You just like film yourself or whatever. And it was no problem. But when you actually know, like, Hey, this is going to go out to the world. Like he's like froze up, even though it was just him in the, him in the room. So, and, that, and that's one of the good things now that, you know, it makes things, it benefits people in that, or from my, like myself, like, when I'm having these conversations in the real world, or this is the real world, but in person, I guess <laughs> <laughs> that hey, you say, "Hey, I'm comfortable with it now." You know, I don't have to be try to be something I'm not, like we were touching on earlier. So, is that kind of how it's been for you? Yeah, I I especially really like conversations where where the host, like kind of like this, where where the host just kind of we're just um, words yeah. why <laughs> where where the host like tries to dig in deeper with with what people are feeling and how we can affect people and inspire people and kind of just you know like the deeper conversations that that are more than just books mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah those, i mean those are my, those are my yeah, favorite i mean i like that at the end of the day and you know you know you still talking about anxiety when i've gotten off here i was like damn you know i probably should ask better questions or maybe i should <laughs> like try to go on deeper on certain questions but you know, my style is way different probably than a lot of others. You know, I'm a shoot from the hip kind of guy. I just like free flowing conversation because if I were to meet you out in a world world, real world or, you know, in, on college campuses or whatever, like this is the type of stuff I would want to be having as far as conversations. I don't like this whole rehearsed thing. We have talking points. I got to set <laughs> other questions. And like for me, like I'm already like I already know like what I'm going to ask you. And like I don't want to be sitting here like, all right, sir, what was your favorite book? and movie that were adaptation <laughs> to that or whatever right and just it's like that doesn't seem fun to me like you know i make mistakes and you know i say stuff stupid or whatever and like it's on here and it's, it's all a good time in the end and that's just how i want it to be but, but i guess that might be a pretty good question though like like it, <laughs> now said it out loud. so like as far as books and movies go do you have a favorite or are, are you a movie person though i guess oh oh yes nice books, watching anything tv shows just yeah. So, yeah, that's one of those things. Every time if I've read a book or whatever, or, or when I see the movie, like people are like, oh, did you read the book? I was like, no, nah, <laughs> like, you got to read the book. <laughs> you know, I mean, so is there one like title out there that's got like as good as movies as, or the, as good a movie as the book is? Uh, you, your opinion? Uh, well, uh, yeah, actually, uh, there were um, 
<laughs> I actually have a list of movies that, you know, have, have <laughs> that, that have books that are way better and then movies that have books that I thought were way worse. So <laughs> yeah, it, it goes both ways. But um, for me, I think uh, the best adaptation of anything that I've seen would be um, uh, Shadow and Bone on Netflix. Shadow and Bone, Shadow and Bone. I, I'm really biased because it is my favorite book series. Okay. But they did a really, really, really good job adapting it because it's not what happened in the book, but they made it better, which is what adaptation should do. I like that. All right. So I'm like, did I watch Shadow and Bone? Hold on. No, maybe I'm thinking of that uh, Lock and Key show. I think I watched ah, that. Yeah. That one was good too. Yeah. Was that a book series? I think I don't, I don't actually know. I just watched I, I don't either, but uh Shadow on Bone. Maybe I didn't watch this. I'll just look it up. This doesn't sound familiar to me. Okay. So let's go to one that I know. What's your next one? Do you have another one? Um uh, uh How to Train Your Dragon would be another one that <laughs> I don't think I ever watched that one. <laughs> how to Train Your Dragon. I never watched that either. Oh. Yeah, that that one is my favorite movie of all time. I know it's kind of stupid for me to have How to Train Your Dragon as my favorite movie of all time, but it is. I mean, what, what, why is it your favorite movie? I don't think it's stupid. I mean, every, you know, I'm, I probably have stupid favorite movies. Okay. So, okay. But why, okay. why, why do you relate to it? Or why do you like well, it? Well, uh, <laughs> dragons are my favorite part of fantasy. So that's just one aspect of the world building that I really mm -hmm. like. I love dragons, favorite mythical creature. I love what people can do with dragons in fantasy and also um the main character is kind of like it's kind of like me like he's kind of just awkward and in a society that is well not like exactly like me but he's basically like awkward and in a society that doesn't really fit him and he takes his circumstances that would be really bad to other people and just makes it his and uses his own ingenuity and and knowledge in order to adapt his environment and ride dragons mm -hmm. and that's cool so that yeah and i i love people in fantasy that like take a species and like learn about that i love people who prioritize knowledge over over fighting and that's what how to Tune Your dragon did so Prioritize prioritize knowledge over fighting. Huh. Just because you don't like fighting? <laughs> oh no, I love fighting. <laughs> I love fighting. <laughs> I love it. So some of my some of my favorite TV shows that I watch, I just watch for the fights. Although it is satisfying to see a character that uses his intelligence and like resourcefulness in order to accomplish something. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I follow a lot of people who do uh, mixed martial arts and that's kind of one of the things that you try to avoid a fight at all cost rather than just actually go in there and just start swinging and do something weird and but if you can avoid it at all costs it seems like to be the best scenario for those types of people having those mma fights or whatever or just well not mma fights but actually a fight on the street like if you go to a bar if you go to somewhere like that <laughs> like you know where there's always some weirdo who always wants to start a fight for whatever reason but these guys who generally or know for a fact they can take people down based on their set of skills they have they're just like they have this calm demeanor and like they really self-aware very self-disciplined and it's like no i don't have to do this i'm just gonna like this is dumb you know like why would i sit here and fight you like what am i going to gain out of beating up some weirdo at a bar and, and that stuff like that's cool to me, you know, and I don't know, I don't know why, but I, th I think it just shows like it's a, it's a whole new level of, I don't know what I want to say. It's a whole new, it's another, it's just, you're on another level where you can actually just say like, I don't want to fight. I can just leave. And then you still feel like you're the better person leaving the situation. And then rather than beating somebody up and breaking their nose and just <laughs> and everybody hates you then just because you did it. But yeah, I don't know, but it, it kind of reminded me of Cobra Kai. You've been watching Cobra Kai? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that is a show that I should watch. I've watched like three episodes of maybe like season two or something. Yeah. I, I I should watch that show, but it's super I, cheesy. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so cheesy. But it's one of them shows. Like, I, for some reason, I just keep watching it. But I I think it's fun. But okay, <laughs> it's so My parents fun. Like it. Yeah, every, like every, almost everyone I know, people are just crushing it. And I think it's because it's 30 minute episodes. I can sit and just crush them when I want to. And then, I, you know, I can get over the laughs. And I, I remember growing up with the movies, The Karate Kid. So I guess it's kind of a sense of nostalgia for me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 
Ah, oh, what's up? Speaking of dragons, so let's go back. Are you a Game of Thrones person? No. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't. Okay, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I haven't. Okay. But I really, really, really need to. Like, I like now. Like, <laughs> House of the Dragon. Like, I would watch sure. the entirety of Game of Thrones and go through that awful ending just to watch House of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, House of the Dragon is a prequel, so I don't even know if you have to go through the actual. Uh... Yeah, yeah, but but I, I I thought that it would, I don't know, be cooler if I watched the the main show and got like Indeed. caught up before going. Be. Into- well because part of me like when i'm watching the new series is that i'm having trouble remembering you know which family goes where and like the lineage of everybody but yeah Mm -hmm. but i mean if you got a lot of time on your hand it's definitely a good series except like what you just said the ending of it compared to i mean i was kind of in the middle of it i was like all right they had to do i guess that was the best they could do i don't think they generally made an ending and said hey let's just completely trash this ending and make everyone hate us for doing it right i think it's just the best they could do at the time so i'm going to give them benefit of the doubt but i mean i enjoyed it it was a good series but i just figured like when you talking about you know like dragons are your favorite creatures and stuff and i was like this girl's gotta be a game of thrones person oh yeah uh like i (laughs) i i'm a wannabe i i haven't (laughs) i I mean like i mean like youtube has got me nailed down hard like they are just shilling me out to the dragon trailers exclusively that is all i get now that is the only <laughs> ad they show me. And I'm like, yes, I know. Like a shiver goes down my spine every single time I see those freaking dragons. <laughs> I know. I want to watch it. <laughs> um, do you think dragons are actually ever true? Do you ever think about stuff like that? Oh, uh, well, the myth had to go from the myth had to come from somewhere. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. It might happen. Like there, there are like giant lizards that that <laughs> exist right now. They may not be as impressive as dragons, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Like, and, do you like like the actual like very typical definition of a dragon, where it's just you know wings and fire breathing? Is that like your favorite type of dragon? Like, or is there ones that you just kind of like? Oh, well, I just want a flying dragon. It doesn't. Have to <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Probably the 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 treasure hoarding. <laughs> god walking on earth type scales like like talons breathing fire the yeah the, the treasure hoarders yeah classic fantasy that's all my right. favorite so all right so when you're not writing when you're not going to classes i mean what are you what are you doing with your time are you kind of researching new ideas for your books are you just catching up on netflix or what, what's a day in the life of yourself like <laughs> Uh, well, I, I watch a lot of TV and I take notes from my TV because I'm just constantly trying to get new ideas and get new fantasy material in my head. And that leads to a lot of fun things. And I also play Dungeons and Dragons and that leads to a lot of fun book ideas too. I don't doubt it. So, what, so uh, I guess you can't have a, so I've never played D&D, but it takes about what, three, four people to play? You have to, or can you play it solo? Yeah. Three, four, five people. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you can't play it solo. You have to get okay. Friends. So all right. So I mean, like when I first, I've always heard of it, but then when I really started paying more attention to it, is when I was watching Stranger Things this past season. Yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> when I heard, when I heard that they had named the villains after, oh boy, I, I like that's gonna make me want to watch Stranger Things faster, at least. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Up. But there was a part of me that. And you, you finished. Have you finished Stranger Things? I don't want to give. No, any- I, I've only got like the first two seasons. So. Okay, well, I, all right. So I didn't want to give out any. I don't want to give out any spoilers. But when they started playing Dungeons and Dragons, and just so, I think so for me to for my own knowledge. So there's a dungeon master, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's like, has, so how does it? Do you make up the story as you go, or you have something pre-planned, or how does it work? I have no idea how it works. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's basically that you just make it up. You have you have players and they pick like their backgrounds and classes. You just make a character. And then the dungeon master has like a plot that they take the characters through. And that's it. It's just it's just kind of role playing through a fictional fantasy story. And the, the DM is basically the author of the story. Oh, OK. So he'd be like, right. Well, so, OK. So I used to watch a lot of Big Bang Theory, too. Right. And uh, they were playing D and D, and I think they made like a Christmas version. So you can actually just kind of design it any way you want to, and you don't. Do you have to tell everybody what you're doing or no? Uh, for I don't. I don't know how it works. So like, you just start the story. And, <laughs> like you start the um, story, and then like you give them like choices. Is this and like you let them choose? I. <laughs> the players. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Just, yeah, it's it's kind of weird. It, it's basically just 
um, like the players and then the DM is like, okay, um, you meet in this place. And then like the characters like have conversations or he's like, okay, um, this person comes up to you and says this and says this. And like, usually there's a problem, like in the campaign that I'm playing, like, um, a person came up to us and was like, Hey, uh, this caravan of people that I hired to buy this land, they're missing. So mm. can I hire you, like you group of adventurers in okay. a tavern, can I hire you and you go off and search for these people? And that's the plot that the DM like gives you and then the players just take it and, and go with it and you meet new people along the way and you fight and yeah. Okay, okay, I got an idea of it. I don't, I'd have to sit down with people who actually, because I, I do kind of want to play it to see how it goes because I've never played it, but I'll have to get some of some expert experts like yourself. And like, All right. So walk <laughs> me through this here. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that the only uh, board games you're really playing? Well, I don't even guess that's considered a board game, but. Uh, for board games. Yeah, that's about the only game that I play mm-hmm. uh, and not really video games either. I don't play a lot of video games. Not anymore. So, yeah, it's basically just books and TV shows and spending way too much time in the fantasy world. I probably spend more time in fictional universes than in here. It makes me a good writer, but it also kind of freaks me out when my roommate comes in and is like, hey, are you doing homework? And I'm like, oh, right. I live in this world, (laughs) not... Not some, not somewhere else. I need to I need to take it back for a bit. Well, what do you mean, like fantasy work? Because because you're diving into books and TVs and shows, and like you have your thoughts and writing those notes about the fantasy world. Is that what you're saying? That you're kind of putting your brain into that type of world? Yeah. Ah. Is that kind of like you know? So I was. I have one of the one good friend that we you know we kind of bounce ideas off each other, and that you know he's a big gamer, right? And that he was kind of talking about how he plays these games to escape. And I, and I game too. I'm not going to lie. I mean, not as much as I used to, but I do. But, um, you know, you use that as an escape to get out of reality, right? So that, and I'm not saying this because you hate reality or whatever, but you kind of go into this world just because you enjoy it so much. And that was kind of what, you know, people who really play these type of video games that have such a great story to them and that you can just get lost in them for hours. Right. Is that kind of what you were doing, but just not video game was. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's really fun. I just, uh, well, for me, I fantasy kind of just gives me this sense of adventure and excitement that, that real life can't really get me. I don't know. It, it's just like, I'm never going to be in a life or death situation. I'm never going to have to like, probably probably like not not likely like like have to save someone or be very important uh like so when and when i watch fantasy it's like these main characters um are like the only people who can solve this problem and they're and they're important and they matter and they go on an adventure and do wild and fantastical things so maybe it's just me kind of hoping that I play a bigger role in this world <laughs> uh like like I get to be important I get to be special <laughs> and that that's kind of what fantasy gives me yeah well everybody wants to be a hero in their own movie I think right I mean I think yeah. everybody again going back wants to be you know that cool person who saves the day and all that but I mean to but you know just to kind of counter your point though I mean I kind of think you're already doing kind of important things I mean not many people <laughs> say that they're a published author author at your age. And that's pretty, I mean, to me, that's a big deal just because, you know, I've always thought, like I didn't go for my doctorate just because I didn't want to go write a dissertation. Right. I was like, I was like, I thought about it. And like, also, I don't think it would ever benefit, benefit me as far as my career went, but I was, do I really want to go for after my doctorate? And it's like, people were talking me or I spoke with other people who went and got their PhDs and they're talking about their dissertations and how brutal it was writing those damn things. And I, <laughs> Maybe I don't want to do that, you know? So, but no, I applaud you. I mean, like, I wouldn't say, I mean, I'd say you are doing big things out there, you know? I mean, just because if it's, what is it, not the norm or not the social norm that, you know, you're out there trying to be, I don't know, a professional athlete or or (laughs) CEO of anything or a teacher or a dentist, whatever it is, but just because you're finding your own way. I mean, you're walking your own path. And I think more people need to see that and know that just because that, 
you know, like even for me, for example, it's like if I wasn't going down the road that everybody said I should be going on and say, if I wanted to go write a book, if I wanted to go write a piece of music or art or whatever that, then just because worrying about what people would think of it, that some people would just never, you know, take those chances. We would never have, you know, uh, a Mona Lisa or something. I don't know. That was probably a weird, that was probably a weird analogy, but, but you know, you, at the end of the day, you just got to like, all right, I'm happy. You know, it's like, I, and I generally, for me, I generally do not care what people do as long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting someone else. I mean, go be, yeah, go be happy. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I think people should, you know, applaud you for doing that. Right. I mean, who cares? Yeah. That's your thing. What? I mean, like, so most people who do stuff, weird stuff end up, and as long as they stick with it and grind with it and, you know, put, like I said, taught, said earlier, like what you put into something is what I generally see what people will get out of it. So, yeah. I mean, if it's going to take you to the moon and to the stars, <laughs> let's go, let's go, baby. <laughs> but so, but yeah, that's cool. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you just got to block out the mechanisms. Maybe that's just my whole point to that. It's just like, you got to block out the haters, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or not even haters. I mean, yeah, I guess haters, but you know, you just got to block out what people try to tell you what to do with your life. And that's one thing that even with me growing up, and this is not about me, but you know, when I was growing up, I used to, if I tried to do something different, you know, I would, and, and people were generally trying to look out for me, of course, but there was, why are you doing that? I was like, well, I don't know. I thought I like it, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I thought it'd be cool to do. And they're like, no, you know, that's probably not the way, way you should do it. Right. You know, like one time I was, you know, for example, I was working this job and I completely hated it. Right. And I ended up just quitting and everyone got so mad because I quit. And I was like, I was going nowhere there. And this was like in college and like, I hated it. I was not giving me fulfillment. And everyone was like, thought I was a loser then <laughs> just because I quit some random job. And I was like, why do you, I don't understand why y'all are mad at me for quitting. Like I should be the one that's mad at myself. Cause like, now I got to figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, y'all, it's not like y'all quit, but I think, and I think people generally like to kind of control others, people's lives. And I know that was kind of a ramp, but I don't know. It's just, it's just weird like that to me. Yeah. I don't but, know what you're talking about. Oh, but, but yeah, people, people should do what you like. What, yeah. what, what they like. I mean, like, like <laughs> I, I was, I was five and, and I thought, and I thought, oh, I love writing. I love, I, I, I love stories. Like, um, and there's such thing as an author. So I want to yeah. be an author. Who cares if, you know, kind of ambitious. I, I, I wanted to do it and sure. I was, and I was able to do it. And you know what, if, if this world didn't have people who wanted to do what they did and wanted to explore their stupid ideas, we <laughs> wouldn't have a lot of things. Uh-huh. That's for sure. I like, it's a good, very good point. And just, and especially in the modern world, like with all these things that, you know, people like to make things, they like to make something new. And with the technology today, that if you have an idea, just run with it. Right. That, you know, I used to listen to a guy that um, he was in college playing football or whatever. And he actually, I think I can't remember the exact quote, but he said something like, Hey man, if you have a good idea, you know, screw college, just get out, you know, and go, <laughs> work, and, and go work at it. And I'm not, and I'm not advocating for anybody to drop out of college. Right. But I'm just saying that, you know, if there's a good idea out there, like, you know, as far as like YouTube, like people, podcasts, newspapers, books, uh, every type of information that you have out there now, you can actually hopefully do something with it. If you were willing to sacrifice and do something that most people, you know, staying up till two or three in the morning working, <laughs> <than> just, <laughs> yeah, writing or doing whatever you got to do. And rather than just, you know, doing what's normal, that what the world wants you to do. So, I mean, that's what, one of the things I started this podcast. And, you know, when I started this podcast, people were like, why are you doing that? I was like, I, don't, I mean, why not? Right. I mean, what yeah. do I have to lose? Yeah. It's like, I don't know what, what it is. Like, I don't, you know, maybe it's a sense of insecurity in other people. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, maybe. Like, like maybe they're not happy with what they're doing. Yeah. So they're like, when if they, it's, and I kind of see that. And, you know, like when I'm not doing like my full time job, I, I coach CrossFit on the side and I'm not trained for it. But like when people are generally doing something to better themselves and somebody's not, they want to try to bring that person down. You know, it's like, what do they call it? Like crabs in a bucket. Have you heard that? <laughs> no, I haven't. So it's like, uh, if you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket, there's always like one crab always trying to get out. Right, but all the other crabs are pulling him back down. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like they're, they're pulling him back down, so he can't, you know, that crab can't go out, get out, and 
be free and do his thing. That's awesome. <laughs> so, crabs in a bucket. I don't know why that came to me and where I heard that from, but I haven't spoke about that in a long time, but that's one of the good things why I like doing these. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah be a, be something cool in life. But anyway, I don't know. But, sorry. That was probably a longer rant than what I wanted to do again. <laughs> but so, uh, what's up back on you though? I mean, what's, uh, <laughs> What, I mean, what's what's the future for yourself? I know you're in college. I know you said you got the sequel and you're going to try to get that finished up with editing and everything. I mean, what's your what's your initial plans? I mean, do you have that overall goal that, hey, I want to write a whole series of these books like Game of Thrones or what? <laughs> yeah, that would be really, really, really cool if I could just keep writing and and keep publishing books. I mean, like I could I could always just go off and be an editor. And that would be equally cool too, because I could I could read people's stuff and help other people get published. Yeah. <laughs> but but like my my <laughs> my pipe dream is to just write a very, very, very long high fantasy series. And that's really hard to write. That is really hard to write. But I I have some ideas and I'm trying to like work toward it and create longer and longer plots and longer stories and, and more more complicated worlds. And yeah, that would just that would just be really cool. I wanted to ask you this earlier because you, you kind of touched on it, but you said one of your characters, you kind of made him resemble you. Is that what you said? <laughs> yep. It, it, so with all your characters, do you generally because I think a lot of authors do this. They, you, uh, kind of modify them after people you see in the real world, or does that kind of make sense? What I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is um, that what, is that generally what you did with this book, or was it just kind of free flowing out of your head? Like, oh, I'm going to make it this way. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of take my own character flaws and put them on my characters I don't know I I like fantasy and I like world and and just like writing for the sake of um creating a story and creating a world but at the same time um writing and books is is more about stories and more about like the people that that are in them like that's why we like stories because we like following people and we get inspired by people rising above challenges and and getting over their flaws and we want that for ourselves Mm -hmm. so something to make writing more more personal for me and also this is a way for me to like get over trials and anxiety is for me to like take like a little piece a little piece of me and put them in my characters and my own faults and yeah if if my characters and (laughs) <laughs> maybe my characters will find out the the answer to the problems that I have like I in in one like a year ago like again like it was COVID like 2020 2021 stuff like sure. that um I I was being really negative all the time I couldn't find uh, I couldn't find any any ray of light anywhere and so I took a character and made her very positive made her be able to see the light in anyone and anything and I and I focused on that book for a very long time because I I thought to myself hey you can that that character can teach you how to be more positive and how to pick yourself back up and and keep going that's I like that I like that Sarah so I mean with that said like when you're seeing that person who's seeing everything in a positive light and I guess I kind of already know the answer to this question but I mean do you generally just like hey that's how I'm going to be today I want to like start working on seeing being a more positive person trying to see the uh what is it a silver lining and everything Mm -hmm. it's it's kind of hard I I just (laughs) anxiety and depression I (laughs) but yeah I just I just I'm just trying to find a reason to keep going and like and maybe when I write more and and I can develop my stories you know I my my book Stone Cold it deals like again with anxiety and expressing yourself and when I initially published it I I thought oh cool I got published but at the same time um there were a whole lot of people that came to me and said hey I really appreciate you writing this book because it actually helped me sure and it it helped me through my own problems. And so I've kind of had that mindset going forward. Like if I, if I publish this, then I can maybe affect people and, and maybe that book can be somebody's favorite book and 
I can make a difference. And that that idea is is really cool to me. And it kind of just gives me a reason to keep writing and Good. wanting to help other people. Yeah, I love that. I mean, just because at the end of the day, you don't really know who's reading your book. Well, you kind of generally know, but you don't know who's actually going to pick that book up and like somebody sends you a note saying, hey, this actually helped me into a bad time. I mean, the same way, like when I'm doing these podcasts or whatever that, you know, if somebody gets inspired off it, great. If somebody helps them out, whatever reason they see, like what other people are going through and they're like, hey, man, I'm not the only one out there that, that you know, it means something to me, you know, that, oh, you know, somebody got something from me and, you know, it's, you know, just working on one day long, you know, one day to get better again, you know, like each day you get better and better and better off your previous days is what I guess is what I'm trying to say. And if it's, if that's book you're doing, if it's what, you know, anybody throwing out positive things out there, I mean, that's just, that's what I want to hear. So I don't know, yeah. but you know, one thing that I, and I wanted to ask you again real quick that, you know, going back on one of my buddies who kind of, we were talking about gaming and stuff and like people who, who generally get depressed and like have anxiety and just have kind of like, what's to say a bunch of different mental issues, but like, you know, with your characters, it seems like, when you see them as far as like in a hero's journey, so to speak, or just in movies or whatever, like when they actually embrace their, the challenge or the problems and they actually overcome them, it seems like to actually help themselves into a certain degree. Does that kind of make sense? What I'm trying to say, like if they, but they, if they keep putting everything off and not attacking their problems head on, it seems like that's what keeps getting worse and worse and worse until they finally decide to get the courage and embrace themselves or embrace the problem. And then it's like, Oh, good. Sometimes. <laughs> there we go. Is that generally kind of what you like you're, you're trying to do in your stories? Embrace these problems, it seems like, like you just said. Yeah. 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 Like um <laughs> like one one of the main aspects of writing, like um when you're writing a villain. Um oh. like um I I try to think like if the if the main character doesn't go through their character arc and doesn't embrace their own flaws and try to find a way to live with them or get over them, solve this problem, then the villain wins. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like you have to go through your journey of self-improvement or <laughs> evil will run abound and you won't be here anymore. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I do know. Uh, real quick, I know we're getting short on time, but who's your favorite villain ever? You have a favorite? <sighs> That's really, really, really hard. Dang. <laughs> okay, well, you don't Dang. have to say your, fa you don't um, have to say your um, favorite. Mm, First okay. one come to your mind. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> Dark Stalker <laughs> from Wings of Fire. Uh, I don't know that one. Probably no one has heard of that. But it's one of my favorite book series, and I like him because he's a dragon. And also, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I kind of like him because... because um, he's he's kind of sympathetically written um yeah i pronounced that word right Sym sympathetically yeah whatever whatever i'm an author i don't know how to pronounce words <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but he he like wants to rule his people and make them better and like rule over all the world because he believes that he's the best and that he can help people mm -hmm. and that was really cool so <laughs> okay uh i think i read something about how you th did you say you wrote something? I can't remember. But Doctor Strange is the best Avenger. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> why, why do you say that, real quick? Um, basically, anything that I like is just a combination of a whole lot of tropes that that I that I like personally. Like, mm. and Doctor Strange is just a combination of a whole lot of different tropes that I like. I like time travel. I like people i like characters that have magical items so like the cloaks and i like magic systems where you like draw a symbol in the air and then use that to fight so it's just it's, it's just a huge combination of different things that that are into one character and so it's fun watching them if you could visit any time period right now where would you go Ooh, um i think mm -hmm. i would go to uh the um Swords and Samurai um, period Ooh. of Japan. Really? Mm -hmm. Never would have expected that from you. Why is that? I mean, I've always, I mean, I always like the history of it. I don't know the deep history of it, but it's always been cool to me. It's like, oh, samurais. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really like Asian culture. It's, it's very, um, 
solidified like different from other people and uh i especially like um japan like that sort of like lawlessness almost and um their fighting styles were really cool their weapons were really cool and there were there were a whole lot of fractions of governments and all these governments would like fight against each other and they would send people to assassinate other people in the middle of the night so it's just kind of I, I don't know i i feel like it would be really exciting <laughs> <laughs> i like it. all right cool um all right sir well i think uh i think we did an hour on here so uh well thanks for being here hey. like it's up here. oh wait real quick um if people want to find me, wait, wait, do you want to ask me anything? Or you, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you want to be asked? What else? I, what do you I just wonder if you, if you, like, I, I've been trying to like, so like I was saying earlier about these podcasts and stuff that, um, that, you know, when I'm generally doing these and, you know, I'm thinking of like better questions and stuff. And like, I was kind of like, <laughs> sometimes I wonder that, like, oh, I wonder if the guests wanted to know anything about me. And like, they want to ask me like random questions. So I, I thought about, well, I've been thinking about like, and I guess you're my f- first one to do this on actually. It's like, hey, why don't you, uh, this, and just ask you if you wanted to ask me anything. And I don't care, but just, I don't know. I decided to throw it out there. I mean, I was, we sit here, whatever. Anything you want to okay. know? Uh, well, um, you have told me a lot about yourself throughout this. Okay. okay. It's fun. Uh, but I guess one one thing, one lame thing that I'd like to know is like, where where are you right now? Where do you live? Oh, uh, in Virginia. Virginia. Ooh, yeah. I was born there. Where you at? Uh, I I, w- I was born in uh, Fairfax. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, okay, that makes sense. So I'm probably three hours south of like Fairfax and DC and all that. Okay. I'm cool. like right. I'm like right in the tip of, and I'll tell you when we get off the air. But I'm like right in the tip of Virginia, where like North Carolina, Tennessee, and West Virginia all come around. Virginia, that's where I'm at. Okay. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, anything else? Anything else you want to know? No, I think uh, okay. Okay. Um, my favorite hero is Batman. I'll say I'll tell you nice. that. <laughs> okay. Um, well, before we get too weird on here, uh, we can end it right there. So if people want to, if they want to find the book, if they want to find you or just anything you want to plug, feel free to do that. Okay. Well, the nice thing about being traditionally published is that you're not just on Amazon. <laughs> you can, uh, so my book uh, can be bought anywhere, Barnes and Noble, uh, Google Play, Target, uh, you know, just like anywhere you can normally buy books and you normally buy books. I'm probably on there. So, did, did you do an audiobook? I, no, actually. Uh, <laughs> they, said, they said that I have to do my own audiobook if I want an audiobook. Okay. So, that's on the to do list. Okay. <laughs> Not sure when I'm going to get to that, but. <laughs> um, boy, anything else? Anything else you need to plug or if people want to find anything? Eh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Cool. So, and I've done a whole lot of other podcasts, so check those out if you want to. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh, well, thanks for doing this. Thanks for this was fun. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I liked it. Okay. All right, people, we're out of here. See ya.